Hi, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna dive a bit deeper into the timeline and how to add any object to the timeline and animate it and animate his parameters. As many things in Replicant can be added to the timeline and have keyframes to animate it. So let's start by organizing what we have. You can add a new track which is a folder, you can rename it. So let's call this avatars. And now we can drag and drop our avatars into the folder. So we have everything a bit more clear and organized. Now we're gonna delete our camera tracks as we're gonna start with a camera. We can add any asset to the sequencer in a multiple of ways. If we go to the add track icon, we have a set of default uh, assets. If you go to the avatars, you will see a list of all your avatars in your scene. And at the bottom, it will show up whatever you have selected in the scene. So if I select this camera, it will appear here. Uh, if I click here, it will create the camera track with this specific camera. If I have multiple cameras, I can click here and change what camera it's going to use this track. Another way to add a uh, camera to the scene is coming here and clicking camera from viewport. This will create a new entire camera using our viewport as uh, the starting point. So if I add one here with this viewport, click here, we have this. And if I lock the view to this camera to see through our camera lens, as you can see, the position of the camera uh, match the position of our viewport when we create the camera. Another way to add anything to the track list, it's going to be by selecting uh, any asset, going to his details panel. And as you can see, all parameter has this icons here at the end, which is key to sequence. Whenever I press this, it's going to create a track in the timeline with that uh, specific asset that I have selected. And if I click again, it will create a track with this parameter and with these values. And the keyframes is what we're going to use to animate things. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can add keyframes to our camera. For now, let's remove this position track and we have our camera here. We can click on the plus icon and we can choose whatever parameter we want to animate, for example, the position. And here you can click on this icon to add keyframes. And you can move here and you can add keyframes here and you can change the value. And as you can see, it has changed. Um, and now the camera is moving through this value to this value, interpolating between each one. Uh, you can do the exact same thing instead of here. If I delete this, uh, you can go to the details panel of the camera and click here. It will add a keyframe wherever I have my header with these values. And now I can move to a different point. And I can use either the gizmo or uh, this value and create a new one. And now, as you can see, the camera is moving. That's one way to animate cameras. Uh, for cameras, there is a different way to animate them, which might be more intuitive. So again, let's delete this track. Let's go to the beginning. And if you click here, open camera preview and edit, you will pilot the camera. And you can create a new keyframe. And we have our position and rotation tracks added. And now let's move to this point. Let's move here, for example, create a new keyframe. And now move here come to this guy here working and create a new one. And now we can cancel the piloting. 
And as you can see, the camera is moving through these three points. And if we preview our camera, click on play, as you can see, our camera is moving. We will take a look at how to ease in and ease out the movement of the camera when it reaches to each keyframe. As you can see, when it reaches this one, it's a very sudden uh, change of direction. So there are ways to smooth those things, but we will take a look uh, in a moment. Next, we will see how to add any object to the timeline. Again, for example, let's select this uh, robotic arm. Click here, mechanic, and I'm gonna rotate it through the duration of our timeline. It's gonna start here, so I'm gonna add one rotation keyframe. I'm gonna move and I'm gonna rotate this here and here it's gonna rotate a little bit more and we can do this for many of the arms so again for this arm I'm just gonna click on rotation and it's gonna automatically clear, create the track for this part of the robotic arm And here I want to, it's not this one, it's this one. I'm going to move this here and here. You can always use the gizmos if it's easier. You can control this and then uh, update the rotation. Mm. Okay, here let's move it like so. And I update the rotation. And as you can see, when I move through the timeline, uh, our robot arm is moving. We can also control the visibility of things and keyframe the visibility parameter. So, for example, let's select this light here. Let's go to MISC and in the visibility. Let's create one keyframe here. Now let's move here. Disable it, as you can see. It's no longer visible. Create a new one here. And create another here. So, as you can see, the visibility keyframes are a bit different. They are not a circle. And also, because uh, these parameters are only on and off, it will not interpolate uh, between values. It will keep this value until it reaches the next one. So it's going to be on all this time. And when it reaches here, that is off, it's going to turn off. So you can see, and on. If you do this uh, for a longer period of time, you can have this effect of uh, a light uh, blinking. You can move things together so it's a bit faster, as you can see. And you can always uh, add any other parameters to the light, for example, the color. You can add a keyframe here with this color and come here and change to red and add another one. Let's move them a little bit. And as you can see, it's interpolating between. Uh, both. Uh, in a moment we will take a look at how to uh, make sure these keyframes instead of interpolating it will behave like the visibility one which will keep this value until it reaches the next one so it will not be in between values. And I have these sparks here. Uh, let's select them. Let's go to the beginning and I want to increase the amount of uh, particles that it generates. So I'm going to create a keyframe here. And as you can see, we have our track. And you can see the, the track with this parameter, which is bound rate with the value. 
and around here I want to increase the number to a lot of particles and add a new keyframe and as you can see it will increase over time but if we want to increase instantly or with a constant interpolation like the visibility parameter what you can do is click on the track go to the curve editor and you will see here that the interpolation is linear you can click here in constant interpolation and as you can see now it's going to keep this value until it reaches to the next one so we are going to have uh, this amount of particles until it reaches the new the new keyframe and it's going to change suddenly and the other thing around can be done uh, so let's go back to our, to our camera and here uh, if you remember we have this very rough change of direction so let's select our camera and let's go to the curve editor and what I usually do is select everything and just click on a cubic interpolation and it has a smooth all the curves so now let's take a look Maybe. so as you can see it's not uh, perfect because the change of direction is very intense but it's more um, soft if I click on Control c to undo you can see how the change is very drastic so let's uh, let's put that again mm. make sure you click on the track that you want to control so you only see the keyframes of that track and let's smooth those and now the movement is a bit more subtle another thing that you can do is move keyframes around so for example if you think this movement of the camera is too fast what you can do is, is spread the keyframes out a little bit or out and now the movement is going to be slower and as you can see it's freezing in this one if we don't want to freeze uh, in this one like to completely stop we can come here uh, if sometimes you have this visual glitch just select keyframes it will go away but yeah let's uh, yeah okay <clears throat> so for this we can change to this flat tangent and now um, it should as you can see it's not stopping completely it's just moving through this position so we have a smoother movement there are a few things that for example if i select this floor and i go to the parameters you can see i don't have this key icon but what i can do is add the floor here and on the plus icon components materials and here you can see i have all the parameters so for example i can change the roughness contrast and let's add one keyframe at the beginning with this value of roughness and around here let's add one so you see the roughness is changing through time and as i said early most of these things can be added to the timeline and been animated so i hope you find this video useful and see you in the next one bye